right, thanks for watching. And today we'll do something really cool, as usual. Today we will calculate the sum of 1 over 1 times 2 plus 1 over 3 times 4 plus 1 over 5 times 6, etc. etc. And it's cool because if you just had one of those terms, then the sum actually diverges, but here it does converge, and we'll calculate that, that sum. And just like for those you know, serious things, it you know very serious things, uh, we need to consider power series. So in this case, consider the following. Consider this sum, one, It's very surprising. 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed, etc., etc., plus x, again, even power, so 2n minus 2 minus x of 2n minus 1. And that will do for every n, because in the end, the idea is to let n go to infinity. And you might say, hey, you alternate between pluses and minuses, surely that cannot be right. But in fact, you'll see magically, you know, this will turn out to be correct. But it turns out we have this, you know, not even series, just this finite polynomial. It turns out we can simplify that because this is really the same as 1 plus minus x plus minus x squared plus minus x cubed, plus blah blah blah, plus minus x to the 2n minus 2, plus minus x to the 2n minus 1. And that's because for odd powers, we can just pull the minus out. But for even powers, minus something squared is just that something. So minus x squared is just x squared. And the reason this is useful is because this actually becomes something of the form 1 plus something plus something squared plus something squared, like 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus da 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 plus r to the 2n minus 1, which is what's called a geometric series. So whenever the terms multiply and you sum them up, that's what's called a geometric series. And there's a neat formula for the sum of the terms of a geometric series. It's simply 1, if you want, 1 minus r to the 2n minus 1 plus 1 over 1 minus r, which is 1 minus r to the 2n over 1 minus r. But r, if you compare this, this is just minus x. So 1 minus minus x to the 2n over 1 minus minus x. So in fact, this becomes 1 minus x to the 2n over 1 plus x. So let me summarize. Summary. Here, 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed dot 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 plus x to the 2n minus 2 minus x to the 2n minus 1. It just becomes n 1 minus x to the 2n over 1 plus x. Okay. All right, now it's still not clear what we do here, but you'll see magically we will get our sum. Namely, a nice thing about power series, and this is not even a power series, just a finite thing, we can just integrate this thing term by term. So, step two, integrate from zero to one. Like integrate this stuff from zero to one. So what do we have? x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 okay, minus x to the 4th over 4 dot 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 plus x 
x to the 2n minus 1 over 2n minus 1 minus x to the 2n over 2n from 0 to 1 equals to the integral, I guess let me split it up, of 1 over 1 plus x, so from 0 to 1, minus integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 2n over 1 plus x. Okay. dx, for all the people who like the x's. Now, the nice thing is, this we can easily evaluate at 1 and 0, okay? Especially at 0, because notice all the terms are 0 at 0. So what we're left with is 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 quarter dot 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 plus 1 over 2n minus 1 minus 1 over 2n equals to, so this is, you know, this we can evaluate, it's just ln of 1 plus x from 0 to 1 minus integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 2n over 1 plus x. Now, this, if you do that, you get ln of 2, sorry for ln of 2 minus ln of 1, but ln of 1 is 0. So, what you can do, you can take this on, put the ln of the left on the left hand side, and again, still not 100% clear what to do, but you'll see in a second. Because, in fact, those terms, we can actually simplify. We can group those terms. So let's do that. It's just step three. So if you write every pair on the common denominator, let's see what happens. So 2 minus 1 over, if you want, 1 times 2 plus 4 minus 3 over 3 times 4 plus, if you want, 5 minus 6 over 5 times 6, etc., etc. Plus, if you want, 2n minus 2n minus 1 over 2n, if you want, minus ln of 2 equals to this integral, minus integral of x to the 2n over 1 plus x, again, from 0 to 1. And the nice thing is, sorry, I forgot here, 2n minus 1 times 2n. And the nice thing is, once you do that, this actually simplifies to the sum that we want. So what do we have? We in fact have 1 over 1 times 2 plus 1 over 3 times 4 plus blah 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 plus 1 over 2n minus 1 times 2n minus ln of 2 equals to minus integral of x to the 2n over 1 plus x. Let's call this thing, it's like a partial sum if you like. So sn minus ln of 2 equals to minus x to the 2n over 1 plus x, dx if you want. Okay, notice, if we somehow show that this goes to 0, then in fact, sn becomes ln of 2, but sn as n goes to infinity, it's precisely what we want. It's this infinite series that we want. So, let's show that. So in particular, let's put absolute values if you want. So I guess that's still step three. So let's put absolute values. And let's try to estimate this. So first of all, absolute value of minus becomes, you know, absolute value of plus x of 2n over 1 plus x. But, you know, this thing is positive. I forgot to say integral from 0 to 1, integral from 0 to 1. This thing, at least it's non-negative, right? Because x is greater than or equal to 0. So in fact, that equals to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 2n over 1 plus x. And here comes the upshot. Now, 1 plus x, so notice, 1 plus 
x? Well, that's greater or equal to 1, because x is between 0 and 1. So 1 over 1 plus x is less than or equal to 1. And again, remember it's greater or equal to 0. So multiply both sides by x to the 2n. So x to the 2n over 1 plus x is squeezed between x to the 2n and 0. And now, last thing, just take all sides and integrate this. Then you get 0 is less than or equal to integral from 0 to 1, x to the 2n over 1 plus x, is less than or equal to, if you calculate the antiderivative, that's x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 from 0 to 1, which becomes 1 over 2n plus 1. That's great, because if n goes to infinity, this actually goes to 0. So in fact, what have we shown? We've shown that as n goes to infinity, this remainder, or this junk, goes to 0. So we have that this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. What does that really show? It means that as n gets large, Sn minus ln of 2 goes to infinity, and sorry, goes to 0. So the difference between Sn and ln of 2 goes to 0. Therefore, Sn, as n goes to infinity, maybe let me write this here, limit n goes to infinity of Sn, that equals to ln of 2. But what was Sn? It was this big sum up to uh, 2n. So if you let n goes to infinity, you indeed get that you know, 1 over 1 times 2 plus 1 over 3 times 4 plus 1 over 5 times 6, etc., etc., you know, infinite series, it actually equals to ln of 2. If that's not impressive, then I don't know what is. Because what did we do? We started with that geometric series, which we had no idea where it comes from. We took that, we integrated it, and then it turns out that after you integrate, the difference of successive terms is perfect, simplifies perfectly to our series. Okay except for this remainder term, but this remainder term, using the squeeze theorem, no, emparelado, we can actually show it goes to zero, and therefore, in the end, we are done, and we show that this, this weird sum is equal to ln of two. All right, so if you like that and wanna see more fascinating math topics, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.